This is Watch Your Style. My name is Eric. For our third and final episode of our series here with uh, Rolex Enforcer, live in Miami, we're going to talk a little bit about the new watches that got released in the past year and also this past week or two with Basel World 2016 and so on and so forth. Uh, so there's a couple new models that have come out and like one of the first ones that I want to go over with you is that new Air King that came out. What is your view on that new Air King? I don't like it. <laughs> I think I think it's ugly. I, I like the size. I like that they've upgraded the size, but like the whole green and yellow and, and with the green hand, I, I don't, I don't like it very much. I don't think I don't think they contrast well off each other. Yeah, I mean, I honestly don't think it's the ugliest watch I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. You know, um, I don't think it's bad. You know, if somebody wants to buy a little watch and they don't, you know, it's going to be in an economic bracket there from from Rolex, brand new, probably like six six. Yeah, you know. I, I don't like the, the, the dial so busy, you know, with the combination of minutes and hour markers, you know, and, and the two yeah. colors. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what they're thinking up there. You know, I guess, I guess this is Rolex's um, way of trying to combat the 263 models that Hublot came out with at the last show <laughs> last month. So, <laughs> which by the way, you know, being that they came out with 263 different versions at the last show, <laughs> also, you know, listen, that, that's a bad thing, but, bro, I mean, I got to hand it to them. Those have to be, you know, the guys up there at Hublot have to be some of the hardest working guys in the industry right now. Because to come up with that many models, you know, as quick as you want to just wipe them out there, I mean, it can't be, you know, it can't be that easy to, to cook them up. I think only Jordan makes more uh, color schemes faster than, than the Hublot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I feel like with that Air King, it's like, you know, maybe Rolex's way of kind of trying to, you know, I'm just guessing... By the way, it's my opinion that maybe they're just trying to cook up something different, you know, for the masses, you know. But uh, yeah, uh, I think that's part of the reason. Uh, you know, Rolex takes a, a lot of heat for like sticking to a path and being very contemporary, and so the, I think they're trying to be, be conservative, but just like throw like a little flare out there and see if it, you know, right. if people react so, to it. So hit or miss, miss. Yeah, I think it's a miss too. That's my opinion. Um, next, I want to go over um, the Daytona. You know, they finally came out. It's been needing this for a while. You know, the Daytona is one of those watches that it has a conservative size. Why would you change the case and make it bigger when you have almost every single one sold before it even leaves the production line? Uh, it's a very iconic model. And I think they would almost kind of ruin it as much as I would like to see a bigger Daytona. But if they made it like, you know, steroided up, it would kind of be ruined. But they finally put a ceramic bezel on the steel one. And I'm going to say right off the bat, that's a hit. Hit. You know? That's a hit right there. Um, I feel like whether it's the white or the black dial, especially the black dial, how it kind of like expands the whole look of the watch out, almost makes it look a little bit bigger, it ties in the bezel with the dial, makes it look bigger. With the white is my favorite one. It kind of gives it that old school feel of the, of the old school one, right? Yeah. I think that the ceramic bezel was a smart choice. I actually predicted it about three or four months ago on my, on my Rolex Enforcer page because <laughs> it's the evolution of what, what, you know, the Daytona, it's honestly, if the Daytona were 42 millimeter, I think it'd be the best looking watch on the planet. Yeah. You know, but it's, it, it's, it's, it's become a little bit smallish. That's why, you know, a lot of people give the, they give a lot of crap to the Royal Oak Offshore, but the Royal Oak Offshore actually took like that, that spot away from the Daytona because, you know, uh, us Americans, we're fatter. We're getting fatter. We yeah. need something bigger on our wrist. We're taller you know? too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You know, but the Daytona the, with the ceramic, it was it was the evolution. It, it had to happen. I think it was a great idea. You know, and um, you know the bezel. It, it's a beautiful, a timeless design. But the bezel is a scratch magnet. Yeah, yeah, it is, man. It is. You know, and and it's it's very hard to polish correctly. You take it in for service, and the first thing they're gonna bang you for is a new bezel. Yeah, they're absolutely. Gonna, yeah, they're gonna tell you, okay, we're gonna keep this bezel. We're gonna, you know, a thousand bucks. We keep your bezel, and yeah. it hurts. It hurts. I, I actually, once it came out, and immediately when I saw it, I got so impatient that honestly, I had to put an aftermarket ceramic bezel on a stainless steel one just because I just couldn't wait. I had to see exactly what it looked like, you know. So I have an example here of what one looks like. And let me tell you, the second, you know, I literally walked the whole way from the watchmaker back over here. I just couldn't stop staring at it, you uh, know. It, it looks, just looks totally different. I feel like it good. gave new life to the Daytona, so. It looks good. Hallelujah. You know, that was definitely a that, hit. Definitely a hit, 100%. Also, I have um, one of the ones that they, I knew it was coming. It was only a matter of time. They put a Jubilee band on the 41 millimeter 
they just two. How do you feel about that? That thing is it's like it's like sex on your wrist, bro. <laughs> it looks it looks amazing. Uh, you know, uh, um, I, I have to admit, uh, you know, I had a um, I just sold them my one one six two three three, which is a thirty six millimeter two tone or roller sword um, date just, and the Super Jubilee was a complete improvement over the the the, the old Hollow Links, but the problem was that the Super Jubilee d didn't have any micro adjustments. Yeah. So it either fit you too tight or it fit you too big, and they solved that on the 41 millimeter because they put like a, it's like, it's, it's, it's still like a, they like put an oyster in, clasp. Yeah, they put like an oyster clasp and it has micro adjustments yeah. and it's, it's, it's perfect. I mean, the Jubilee bracelet, there's nothing more elegant than the Jubilee bracelet. Yeah, so that, that's definitely a hit, you know? They obviously added some other variations with like a smooth gold bezel. They also added rose gold, which that yeah. needed to come out any minute now. They, you know, Rolex does it on purpose. They, they release it little by little. That, that was bound to happen. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely a hit. Yeah. On my Instagram, I said I was gonna actually trade all my Rolexes for APs, but I think that's that might be my <laughs> next my next pickup. A forty-one millimeter Jubilee Datejust, sweet man, beautiful. All right, and and last for Rolex, I want to go over the you know because they came out with a bunch of different releases. It's just I kind of want to focus on also other brands a bit. But the forty millimeter, the Yacht Master, they came out with a two tone. Rose gold and steel with a nice chocolate face. I mean, I personally think that's a hit. That 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 lineup of the two tone yacht master was getting already kind of boring, you know, with the yellow and the regular dials that they had. I mean, what what do you think? I think the the the, the chocolate bezel and the rose gold uh, they they, uh, they play well off of each other. Um, as you see, last year they breathed in some some new life into the yacht master too when they released uh you know the the rose gold on the rubber bracelet. And I feel like the Yacht Master doesn't get enough love as it should. You know, a lot of people, they usually go the GMT route or the Sub Mariner route. And uh, the Yacht Master is a beautiful watch. It's very timeless. You know, it has that, that, that strong, the bezel's very strong, the, the platinum bezel. I mean, it's, 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 it's a good buy overall. Yeah, I mean, so for me, overall, I think the Rolexes all through the board were pretty nice. Um, obviously, this... They make a bunch of different models for everybody so that that way there's got, you know, it's almost like more baits in the water. There's got to be one that you're going to want to bite on. But that being said, I want to move on to one of my personal favorite brands, but that I'm not really sure what was going on when they came out with the idea. I mean, doesn't mean I won't own one if I can get one cheap enough. It had to be really cheap because I'm not thrilled about it. But the Diver in Chrono, and there's something about the word Diver in Chrono that I just don't seem like they go well. Um, the blue one, that navy blue with the yellow accents doesn't look bad, but I'm not really that into that yellow and that orange. I mean, how do you feel about the new AP Diver Chrono? I mean, I think basically what AP is trying to do is trying to spice up the line a little bit. You know, they, they realize that most people will never go diving anyway. But I mean, as for, as for practicalness as a diver, it has, I mean, it makes no sense to have a Chrono. You can't even use it on the water. You know, it, it, it doesn't make any sense, but you know, it's a little something different. You know, I, I think maybe they felt like the offshore line is, was getting a little bit tired. So they threw that out there, you know, and you know, but I, I think it, I think it might do, I, me personally, I don't like it, but I think it's gonna do well on the market. It's gonna be, you know, people gonna like it. My, my opinion is I feel that for that, they would've just left the diver as a diver and maybe come out with another option, you know, and need the offshore chrono as the offshore chrono. I don't know why they had to try to interbreed them too, you know. I don't know what the heck's going on there. But I'm going to go ahead and say it's a miss. But that being said, they also released on the same show the, the AP 41mm Royal Oak Chrono, which is one of my favorite watches of all time in any, in any finish or metal or dial or anything. Yeah. The yellow gold with the blue dial, and that is a hit hit. I mean, how do you feel? I mean, it goes without saying. I mean, any 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 Royal Oak chronograph, you know, a, a lot of the purists will always choose that over over the Royal Oak offshore because it's it's it's, it's a, you know it's not a modular movement. It's it's, it's integrated. It's not piggybacking off everything, off anything. You know, so I mean, that, that's a that's a boss watch, man. Anybody who's wearing one is, has made it in life. Stainless gold, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the yellow and blue is like we were almost waiting for that. You know, um, let me tell you some of the older offshores that came out in yellow gold and some of the older royal oaks i feel like the the alloy mix that they had for the yellow gold i never really liked that i feel like it was kind of pale looking but this new one that came out it's like bam the second i saw it i was like oh yeah they definitely tweaked 
the 18 karat, you know, yellow gold mixture there. And it's got that perfect yellow look, you know. Yeah, it, looks, it looks good. It pops now. Before it was very dull. I can't wait to get one. I'm going to do a video on it. Like, I just, I just want to try it on my wrist, you know. Yeah. And then last, the last watch that I want to go over because it's probably the least expensive one of all probably, I think so. Because I didn't even do my homework on the retails. But is the two-door, that bronze two-door that came out. The Black Bay, right? Black Bay yeah. and bronze. That for me is is a hit. I think I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be a hit. It's gonna have a massive cult following like the Bronzo um, Panerai. Things used to go for 13, 14. Now if you pick one up for 26, 27, you're lucky. <laughs> you know, and this is gonna be it's gonna be a monster. If you can pick one up. Yeah, I think overall they, they came out with a, a bunch of good exciting watches and uh, the ones that I that highlight to me the best are the 41 millimeter yellow from AP. The ceramic bezel Daytona and that two door. That's gonna be nice and uh, let's see what happens, you know, what's gonna be coming out good and see how these watches play out and you know, all the prices and stuff like that. Yeah, but, but Basel World was pretty good this year. You know, last year I was a little bit uh, disappointed, but this year they have some nice additions, you know? I mean, I don't know. I felt like at the show that was a couple months ago, it was almost like an episode of Oprah Winfrey when they're giving away free cars. You get a car. You get a car. It was like, you get Sapphire. You get Sapphire. Everybody gets Sapphire. Everybody came yeah. out with a Sapphire watch. You know, I, that, that's a problem for me, but, uh, you know, whatever. You got to let these guys do whatever they want to do, you know? Like, it's really a problem for somebody who spent a million and a half on that RM, <laughs> and now you got all these, you know, who was it? I think, was it Bell and Ross that came out with a Sapphire yeah, watch? Yeah, Bell and Ross came out with the... Uh, Sapphire uh, Turbion and it's I I'm I don't even I'm not even gonna comment on that you know yeah um, apparently that's uh apparently that's what it is you know we're gonna have a replica Chinese Sapphire watches the day after tomorrow any day soon now yeah, you know it's getting it's getting so, but anyways that's enough for for now um another special thanks to the Rolex and Fortune for taking time down here to come visit us here at CRM Jewelers in Miami and uh, you know we'll be having more videos in the future coming. We're going to be talking together about more topics in the watch game and the watch market. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to like and share. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. My name is Eric. Watch your style.